This week on RVER, sponsored by Progressive Insurance. Hey, Chief, we got a damaged RV on its way to the OR. Well, that sounds like a job for the new head of RV surgery. <laughs> Wait, are you promoting me? Congrats, Martinez. Doctor! Well, that sounds like a job for the new head of nursing. So you're just promoting everyone now? Yeah, kind of looks that way, doesn't it? When your RV really needs saving, Progressive has you covered. See if you could save with a leader in RV insurance. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Coverage subject to policy terms. Podcast. It is Friday. My gosh, weekend time. Yeah, you're all fired up, excited about the weekend. Oh man, it's great, man. I'm gonna, I'm gonna fuck around at work. I'm not gonna do anything. I'm just gonna be an asshole, and then I'm gonna go home, and I'm gonna get drunk, and I'm gonna have a great time. And I tell you what, uh, the, the 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 excitement buzzing around my brain. The idea of okay, it's time. It isn't so much that I'm sitting around getting shit-faced, which obviously I'm not. It's just the idea that for a period of time, I don't really have as many deadlines, I guess. I don't know. It's just something spectacular about getting out of the ritual of working for the man. Uh, I'm kind of booked till about like mid afternoon maybe late afternoon today Uh, boring shit to do podcast related got to go for a run got uh, three or four miles of hills today these are all things that uh, have to get done the uh, swimming pool my uh, grandsons are coming over they've uh, learned well one of them has learned how to swim and he wants to show off for grandma and grandpa so that's awesome got to clean the pool all right Real world problems, clean the swimming pool. But, um, you know, these are things that I like, okay, I got to get this done and then I'll I'll, I'll lay this all down. And then it's, you know, I am free to focus on other things that have been neglected in the past. Honestly, I'm not going to sit around. Uh, I want to make sure that Pooh Bear is happy with the basement. You know, she wants me to put those little light plates things on there. Wants me to take care of that stuff so she can actually start to enjoy the room. So I'm like, yeah, I don't, I don't want to like just rest on my laurels. Uh, I want to uh, focus on these things. I wake up, and I guess I'm booked tonight. Hold on a second. With that noise, Daisy's chewing on a damn bone. I was like, "What? What? What's happening over here?" By the way, Matt Kuyper's and Terry Emo won Berlin Raceway tickets. Kuyper's, uh, Kevin, reach out to Matt and tell him. I sent him a note. Hello. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. You sound chipper and bright and fun. Mm-hmm. Did you say you got a little toasty in bed last night? Yeah, it was like 150 degrees. I didn't sense that. I had the fan right in my face. I have another fan for you on your side. Why don't you use that? I will, but I do. I should, but I don't like it like blowing in my face. Well, there's. Uh, are you shooting pool right now or something? <laughs> no. It's really I loud. Just, <laughs> I just opened up the, the container of Clorox wipes. Anyway, um, yeah. Well, you. The thing about fans is you could. There's this. Have you ever heard of uh, angles? You know what? How I, how angles work? 
Yeah, yeah. You can turn the fan to uh, hit the area below the neck and the and the boobage so that you do you have boob sweat when you sleep? Sometimes. <laughs> okay. Um Can you just sit still maybe just stop. I am sitting still. No, you're not. You're doing something. <laughs> I am not. I'm just standing here drinking my cup of coffee. I'm just hearing all sorts of little clicks and chirps and burps. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm standing by the dishwasher, and I just started the dishwasher. Yeah, stop. Just stand still. <laughs> no, I, I, the dishwasher was already running, but I was standing by it, so maybe that's what you were listening to. I heard. You know, I'm wearing headphones, and it's just all these, it's these uh, cracks and crunches. Is that the cat? That was the cat. Okay, so... That's Milo. How did you know it was Milo? I can tell. But they sound the same. No, they don't. Hmm, that's weird. Milo well, has... No, that's true. Um, Lincoln has a very asshole-ish meow. I wouldn't describe, oh, hi, I wouldn't describe Lincoln as asshole-ish. Thank you. Hi, honey. Anyway. Yes. So the back half of the day today, I was going to be free to do what I want. I think that's a song. Maybe uh, work on the basement. M- mow the lawn. You can do that. Well, I how do I have a time turner like Harry Potter? Can I d- be in listen two places at once? I just listen to me. I just said that was the plan for tonight. That you could go with me. I wanted to include you, but you did not have to. I can very easily go with Jackie and Justin. No, well, you see, that's there's a birthday. What she's referring to, ladies and gentlemen, is a birthday party for a dear friend of the family. Correct? Well, well, yes, it is a dear, 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 right. dear friend of the family, but you know, it's you know, really yeah. one of Jackie's best friends. So I don't. I think know, she would, but still, if, I don't think she would be. Cru- I don't think she would be cr- that crushed if you didn't. I go. know that it's not about crushed. I don't care if people are crushed. We all know that. I'm all about crushing people. Uh huh. It's, you know, there's a lot of people there that we both know very well, very good friends with, and it's going to be like, boy, where's Eric? Where, boy, you're here. Jackie's here. Justin's here. Where's Eric? Oh, he obviously doesn't care. You know, that's how it is. So. <laughs> I, I don't think they would think that, but if you feel like they would think that, then then. Yeah, that. I would feel very guilty. And honestly, it's the right thing to do to go. Uh-huh. I actually agree with you. I should go. I'm just bitching because I wasn't expecting it because no one in this household ever tells me anything. Well, we do, but. This we one, do, but. Th- this one uh, you didn't tell usually me. Usually you nine times out of ten we do tell you but you either are not listening you forget you something i will give it to you that this time i did i did forget to tell you but more normally i do tell you and you just forget yeah let's let's forget about all those other nine times let's focus on the one time yeah which is right now is there anything else going on? Do I have to, uh, uh, you know, go to a wedding tomorrow, perhaps? Maybe a baptism? Part of, baptism, first part of the day, wedding on the back half of the day tomorrow? Oh, yeah, there is that, there is that one thing tomorrow. Are you serious? <laughs> no. I do have to remember, though, I do have to go to the east side. I have to go to the east side tomorrow, remember? Do you remember what, this? What the fuck are you talking about? Oh, my God. Are you serious? No. I mean, yes. Yes, I am, sir. What are you talking about? For uh, Amber Nolan. Oh, okay. Remember? I knew she's having a baby or something. Or a bit, uh, well, some she t- did have a baby. It's his first birthday party. Okay. And, yes. And you are, go- are you going with anybody else? No, just me. And then I'll either stay at Mimi's house or figure something out. God, I don't remember this shit. I got to pay better attention. Yeah. I gotta, whenever you tell me the stuff that you do, I actually have to put it on my on my calendar. I wonder if anybody else listening does the same shit when their significant other tells them something. They should put it in a calendar or something. Then you can't. Yeah, I got to do. I got to turn this around. 
And then A, there's proof that you were told, and B, you won't forget. No, it's true. All right, I'll give you that. Yeah. You see, that's what makes me an excellent husband, admitting my fault. Sure. I agree. But I would rather have my basement done, so if you don't want to go tonight, I'll tell him that's why. Yeah, I'll try to fit them both in. It's important that so, I go there. It starts at 6.30. It's at New Holland Brewery. It's not a big deal. In downtown Grand Rapids? Yeah. No, you shouldn't have said where it was. Not a big deal. Eh. Sometimes it is. Or else it could be at uh, Hot Cat. I can't remember. All right. I love you. Okay, I love you too. See you, bye. Bye. I think uh, we're at a point where, ev- okay, this room and the bedroom uh, needs a deep cleaning. And but before that, the dogs need to be deep cleaned. Every dog needs a thorough bath. And then the rooms that they lounge in, this one and my bedroom, they then need uh, to be thoroughly bathed. It's one of the, it's a horrible musty smell when uh, your dog, your your room smells like dirty dog asshole. It's just, it's getting on my nerves. It's making me cranky. I'm doing a terrible job of just maintaining cleanliness speaking of that yesterday's ben and eric patreon podcast was off the rails i can't i'm not gonna really get i'm not gonna show you anything here so for those people that are watching uh on the twitch live stream um you need to know what what was up. Rob in New Jersey, Blue State Rob, had sent me video of some place in the UK where this burly black chick got pissed off at a skinny white chick who's wearing a mini skirt or a little dress. And, uh, at a public place and started to ground and pound on her and was just beating the shit out of her. And the woman, the woman who was getting beat up, her little skirt, you could see up it, you know, it was all, it was like a one piece. And some animal who's shooting the video <laughs> happened to be like at the right angle and you could actually see up her, her dress. And she wasn't wearing under you could uh, underwear. You could actually see her genitals. And uh, well, the term "beat the shit out of her" is actual actually happened because uh, the little girl crapped, and you could see it while that one chick is like pounding on her. That, that lady craps, and you can see all of this. Smashed crap in between her ass cheeks. And then her whole, the whole thing was just, it was, it was ridiculous. And your old pal Eric Zane may have uh, uh, paused it and zoomed in several times for the comedic effect of this. Um, it, it is really, it really went off the rails. Brandis writes, oh my Lord, I cannot. No, I mean, the, uh, the the angle pointing at her ass and genitals, again, it was that whole thing where uh, you take, you paint, you know, brown or colors on one half a sheet of paper when you're a kid and then you, you smash it together. That's what her ass did with the shit. Ugh. Hideous. Yet another reason to be part of the Patreon podcast for the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. Uh, Kenny indicated he was actually turned on by it. And that I think we we um 
We kind of like uh, opened up Pandora's box, you know, kind of like the same way that I became really interested in women's feet. Now that's like my thing. I have a, yeah, I told you about this. I have a total foot fetish. I don't know. I think I saw a really pretty foot. And then now um, I just love women's feet. I'm really into women's feet for some reason. Even the ugly ones. I don't even mind an ugly, gnarled foot. I think now Kenny, uh, after being exposed like I was to the foot, he was exposed to a dirty asshole with shit on it. He is now into scatological things uh, on a sexual level, so that is a new thing to add into his uh, profile on all of his dating profiles. (laughs) And perhaps to be able to meet the next Mrs. Kenny, uh, he'll have to write, willing to have one of you take a doo-doo on me. All right. That is how it unfolded yesterday. Um, This story is going around. Did you see the one about the guy who fell into the volcano? Holy shit. Um... Okay, Mount Vesuvius is the big one that is, uh, uh, you know, buried the city of Pompeii. Look at that thing. That just looks fantastic. Now, that is still an active volcano. Side note, in preparing myself for this uh, this little story right here, um, you know, that was tens of thousands of years ago. I don't even know when the exact eruption happened that buried the city and and no one knew about this because um it was so incredibly buried in in ash that um it just was kind of wiped off from the face of the earth and then in like 1650 someone discovered this and then they kind of left it alone and didn't like unearth it. And then some guy in like 1750, like a hundred years later, he actually worked to try to like um, slowly bit by bit, remove the ash. And now you have, um, well, basically you can see the city streets where these people used to live. It's really fantastic. And if you've ever um, also seen, they have um, bodies. You can actually go and see bodies at this tourist site which is just remarkable if you uh, if you think about it. Um, and, and these are the bodies of Pompeii. This is incredible. This guy, uh, where was what he, look at this. This guy's excavating a horse, fossilized horse. But, uh, and then these bodies here, these people that look at this guy's, and he looks like he's spread eagle. They describe this one as the Pompeii masturbating man. I don't think really he's masturbating. Maybe he was having one big pull right before the end of the world. But this is actually a thing. You can go and check this out. Look at this guy. It almost looks fake. And that's because the guy who unearthed this in 1750 whatever, he discovered that as he was pulling ash out, that the voids that he would find is actually the space that was occupied by a person. And all of the tissue and the organs obviously uh, were consumed, but there was still bones there, okay, skeletons. So what this guy did was he pumped high-grade plaster, this is true, into the void, this is brilliant, and then removed everything around it to reveal the body. So what you're actually seeing here is uh, that old of plaster with bones inside. But that's what they did in order to get these images. Isn't this? This is incredible. I find this very, very interesting. Uh, this is actually a little one. So they, they um, look at you see. Pompeii excavation unearths well-preserved bodies of wealthy man and slaves. So then he pours plaster into there and then chips everything around it and then uh, is able to create uh, these bodies, these these incredible excavations. 
Okay, uh, that's just kind of like a side note. I, uh, I'm i digressing here. This is in Italy at the base of Mount Vesuvius. Brandis writes, Zane's giddiness is getting close to celestial excitement level. This is true. I love seeing neat things. No need to punch down because I'm interested in stuff. Aram says much more impressive than James Webb. You're not kidding. That old James Webb thing. I, I've been talking about um, images like what they posted for literally years. The Hubble Deep Field goes back to 1995. And I've been, ever since I discovered, well, ever since I started paying attention. And I try to explain to people how unbelievable the image is. Everybody would look at me in the face, point and laugh, except for maybe Aram. And now all they have to do is uh, show the nearly exact same image from James Webb. And all of a sudden it's a big deal. Uh, hashtag Hubble life forever. Uh, James Webb is shit. And everybody is yelling at me because I posted on Facebook. It's the same thing. Why, why is this such a big deal? Yeah, well, what took Hubble two weeks? It was like trash talk going on. What took Hubble two weeks or a month takes James Webb hours. Yeah, I don't give a shit about the time. Shut up. I have yet to see even one image from James Webb that makes me want to do anything more than shrug. I've been see. Hold on. I'll be right back. I got to, I have show and tell for you. I'll be right back. This is the book that I I have. Hubble's Universe. This is why Team Hubble every day. Oh, my God. Everything here is stuff you've already... Oh, boy, big deal. Yeah, James Webb. Look at at this. This is just as good as anything on the Webb telescope. And then they're doing these comparisons, and it's the same fucking thing. It's like they ran it through Photoshop. Such bullshit. We've we've already seen this movie. There you go. That's the beast. The Hubble Space Telescope. Uh, There is an image going around that Megan sent to me. I don't have it in front of me right now. About... um, if you could send that on an email, Megan, I might be able to show that image that was seen by the James Webb telescope. I've convinced Aram. James Webb is a scam. The idea was floated about taking the Hubble and bashing it into James Webb. Kyle, who is a heathen, and does not believe in, uh, I don't think anything religious. I think, I don't, can you, if you're gay, do you believe in God? Can gay people believe in God? I think they can. Kyle does not. Gay and does not believe in God. There are people that are enjoying the show right now who want to strike you down. 
Brandis says, yes, they can. And then she wrote, wow. Well, I'm just asking now that I know. I don't think Kyle does. Kyle prays to penis and not God. PSN Bleach. I keep forgetting who that is. Did we ever hear what happened to the dumpster divers, Kyle? He is on vacation. He just, uh, Emilio made it seem like he was, you know, like something terrible, like he was dead. He's not. He's on a trip. He just didn't want to say where he was or what he was doing. Okay. Where was I? Okay. Uh, Mount Vesuvius. Uh, Mount Vesuvius at the, uh, with the, the, the volcano that buried Pompeii. Holy shit. Oh my God. All these poor people just minding their own business. And then boom, it's all over when that thing blows. Why the hell would you build a town at the base of an active volcano? Well, truth be told, I, I, I think there's plenty of communities around it. Now it is still an active volcano. Uh, 2,700 people a day are allowed to ascend Vesuvius, take your pictures, and leave. You're only allowed in one particular area to view. You actually can uh, uh, slowly go into the caldera area, um, not too far, and then that's it. You leave. Now... Whenever you have signs that say, stay on path, they might as well say, uh, walk wherever you want. I've seen this myself when I visited, uh, uh, what do you call it? Yellowstone, not Yellowstone. Which one is in Wyoming with Old Faithful? Yellowstone or Yosemite? It's Yellowstone. Yellowstone's a big, giant volcano. It's a super volcano. You're basically just walking on Earth's crust after like a volcano went off. And it says right on the thing, stay on the path. There's like, uh, if you go around Old Faithful and all those other geysers and the uh, Grand Prismatic Spring and anything around there, they you, you stay on the uh, the path. They've got like a boardwalk that they build for you to stay on. And then everybody wanders off of that all the time. People will go and they'll like uh, uh, get into the hot spring and then they'll be dissolved. Because some of those springs aren't just warm water. They're, they're chemically water that will eat your body. That's happened. We've talked about it on this show because people are stupid. Same thing, Mount Vesuvius. Some asshole wandered over to the opposite side of the ridge where you are not supposed to be. His name is Philip Carroll. With two family members just the other day. The family hiked up Vesuvius and accessed the top of the volcano through a forbidden trail. So it says forbidden trail, do not enter. And Philip says, yeah, I'm going. The family took another trail closed to tourists, even if there was a small gate and no access signs, according to the uh, spokesperson. When the family reached the top of the over 4,000 feet high volcano, Carol stopped to take a selfie. And... He dr- the idiot dropped his fucking phone into the crater. He then started to crawl into the crater. This is the, the place where the, vo- the, the, the lava comes shooting out of. 
Now, fingers crossed and hope that, you know, a big uh, a jizz wad of lava comes flying out and just encases his body. But no, that did not happen. I'm sure there were people watching from afar saying, please, please fall in. Please fall in. Well, he did fall, but no lava hit the idiot because as he's trying to climb down, he fell several meters into the crater. Here's the damage done to this fat fuck uh, after he fell. He's all fucked up. Got his, I don't know if he got his phone though. He had to be rescued because once he got to that point, um, it was so steep, he could not get out. He stopped his fall, but at that point, he was stuck. He was very lucky. If he had tried to move any further, he would have fallen another 300 meters into the crater. That's 1,000 feet, roughly. This is why there's a sign that says no assholes allowed. Here is the asshole. You idiot. My God. Next up. The guy suffered scratches, cuts to his arms and back. Guides saw what happened with binoculars. So basically, uh, the authorities are there. They're, they're like watching him from across the thing because, you know, that's uh, it's it's quite a distance across. They're like, oh, fuck. Those guys are over there. They shouldn't be there. Well, while other people are walking around to go to tell them to get the fuck out of there, dudes are watching with their binoculars. And, you know, they're speaking Italian going... Whatever you say in Italian for let's let's keep an eye on this fat fuck. Oh, there he goes. They saw what happened with binoculars from the opposite side of the rim. They rushed to help. Uh, raise your hand if, you know, it says rush to help, but let's be honest. They probably took their time. They used a long rope to pull him to safety. When you throw the rope down and you're pulling his fat ass up, that's when you lecture him. That's when he's most vulnerable. So, stupid American. Uh, Can we talk about how only Americans do this shit? That might not even be true, but you still just say it. And what you do is, if you're the authorities, the good people from the park pulling this guy out, this fat fuck, you video that. Okay? And, And shame him horribly. And then start to let him up and then like let him back down. Say, hey, uh, we're getting ready to take our lunch break. So we're going to need you to just chill out. And then the guys sit there on the edge of the caldera and they they eat their lunch. While this fat fucker sits there and cries. And then, uh, you know, you, you take like several more hours to get him out. And then it hits dinner time and then you let him back down again. Start over. And then uh, let him spend a couple of nights in there. All of this being documented. And then you take all that uh, uh, footage. You make a nice super cut of this guy uh, suffering. And then you have like a fiber optic screen right at the entrance of the Mount Vesuvius, uh, 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 you know, ticket area, I guess. Because it is a ticketed event to be able to go do this. You have to pay for it. With don't be this disgusting American asshole. And then what they also need to do is they need to like, uh, through CGI, put a MAGA hat on the guy and a let's go, let's go Brandon t-shirt. And on the back of it, it needs to say, I hate black people. Okay. Say this is the typical American. Okay. Just so that we can, we can, I don't even know if you want to go that far, but it sounds like a good idea for this show. Carol was taken into custody by the local police. It's not immediately clear what charges he faces. NBC News has reached out to the Carol family 
and him for comment. I like the uh, the fact that the guy didn't let his face get photographed. I don't think we have seen his face yet. If you see it, if if it were to be seen, they'd probably he'd probably lose his job, and rightfully so. You don't want someone that stupid uh, working for you. The idiot fell into Mount Vesuvius. Okay, you know, losing fitness, gaining weight, that all hurts a person mentally. Honest to God, that can affect your relationships. It's time to turn this thing around. I want to help you feel better. And all you have to do is decide that you want to try. I want you to try this as you're trying to turn things around. It's the FitBod app. This thing is amazing. You don't need a ton of weights to do this. You can do it in your home with no weights. You can do it in the middle of nowhere like I do at Fear Bunker North. You can do it at the gym. The workouts are tailored to what you have to work with. And my gosh, they work everything. Muscles, cardiovascular system, you name it. It's time to turn it around and I want you to do it by using the FitBod app. One of the important things about FitBod is the algorithm changes, which, you know, those are words that's kind of like above my pay grade, but it senses and knows when you're improving as you work out and updates your fitness plan as you go so that you're not like stagnating and things like that and plateauing. FitBod has figured it out and all you have to do for less than the cost of one session with a personal trainer, you can get a full year of personalized workouts with FitBod. It integrates with your Apple Watch, Wear OS, smartwatch, and apps like Apple Health, Fitbit, and Strava. Man, this is incredible. You can crush your summer fitness goals with personalized workouts from FitBod that improve as you do. Get 25% off your subscription or try out the app for free when you sign up now at fitbod.me slash Zane. It's got to be fitbod.me slash Zane. Try it out and see for yourself. 25% off your subscription or try it free at fitbod.me slash Zane. Fitbod. At Progressive, you can get 24-7 protection, even if you break the space-time continuum. We did it. We time-traveled to yesterday. Wait, Progressive covers us 24-7, but we just created an eight-day week, and it's 24-7 coverage, not 24-8. We gotta go back. Are you joking right now? Shh, I'm calling them. Hi, I have a question about time travel. Progressive offers more than a great price when you bundle home and auto. We offer round-the-clock protection, which literally means anytime. Coverage from Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates and third-party insurers and subject to policy terms. Bundle discount not available in all states or situations. Jesus. Thank you to the folks who are watching the show on Twitch, Facebook, YouTube, and Twitter. Out of all of those, Twitch is the only one that goes uninterrupted. Twitch.tv slash Eric Zane Live. Some of you are like, wait, what? Huh? I know that might sound like something new to you, but it's really simple. Just either download the Twitch app and search my name. Or just go to twitch.tv slash Eric Zane live and establish a profile. Takes you two seconds and then hit the notification or the follow button. Hit the follow button. And then every time I go live, you will see that. First time chat. Packer, the number four, fun. Packer for fun. Says love you, brother. I love you too, whoever you are. Otherwise, the opening of this show, which today is going this long, 30, 40 minutes, is all you get on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. Because I'm about to cut the cord. Because I want you all that are watching on those platforms to go over to Twitch so you can get the rest of the show. Now, that's only if you want it live As it happens. Once the show is complete, you can rewatch it anytime you want on Twitch. 
or like most people do, 95% of my audience, 99% of the audience listens to the audio podcast. Downloadable wherever you download podcasts. All of them. Just search Eric Zane Show Podcast and uh, you're off and running. That being said, I must now say goodbye to my friends on Facebook, Twitter, and YouTube. You all have a great day. Hopefully, I'll be able to check you out on Twitch. Thank you for watching this. Twitch and Facebook brought to you by Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid, and EV. Twitter brought to you by Blue Frost IT. And YouTube brought to you by Frank Fuss, My Policy Shop Insurance. A 911 dispatcher is in deep shit. Oh. I had, uh, this story actually broke when I was on vacation. And, uh, my God. I was like, I cannot wait to talk about this. And then I forgot about it. What is it with 911 dispatchers these days? You had the one, um... Remember the uh, Tops shooting? It's weird that something as horrific as the Tops grocery store shooting. It's like, seems like so long ago because since then we've had Uvalde and we had uh, Highland, Highland, Illinois, Highland, what is it? I forget where the parade was. Side note, Uvalde, um, Pete Arredondo, that fat fuck, um, uh, chief of police or whatever he ended up i think he stepped down that happened during vacation too pete arredondo okay he stepped down from the city council because remember he was to be sworn in uh the day after the uh mass shooting Still bothering me is that leaked video of the cops having a party in the hallway for like an hour. What the fuck? But uh, on the on the tops shooting, you had the lady hiding under the counter, and she said, uh, uh, "Help me, help me! I I need help. There's a there's a killer. He's he's feet away from me. He doesn't know that I'm here." And the nine one one operator is going. You don't have to whisper. What are you doing, idiot? And I think she hung up on her. Nothing worse than getting hung up on someone who's screaming at you. All you're trying to do is make sense of the situation. And some crazy fuck who can't control uh, her emotions is screaming at you and hangs up. A 911 operator. This one, though, doesn't have to do with the mass shooting. Uh, but the story is coming to light right now. Kelly Tichinell called 911 in July of 2020 on behalf of her mother. And she called 911 and the operator says, 911, what is your emergency? And I swear to God, she said, my mother is bleeding inside of her body and it's coming out of her rectum. She's bleeding from her rectum like bad. And okay, uh, the 911 operator then starts saying, well, I'm going to send a 911 or a uh, emergency vehicle to you, but only if you agree to go to the hospital. And the lady's like, wait, what? What what are you suggesting that I'm going to have the ambulance come here and then uh, have her get in the ambulance and then take her out of the ambulance? I'm not sure where you're getting at. Can you just send the fucking thing? And the lady says, well, you have to agree to be admitted to the hospital. And she goes, well, of course I agree to be. She's going to die. She's bleeding bad. Something has happened that's causing a, 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 a fucking geyser of blood to pour out of her butt. My mom. Well, 
Um, the 911 operator has now been charged with manslaughter because she didn't believe the distressed daughter calling. This is in Pennsylvania. She goes, I don't, I don't know. I don't believe you. And hung up on her. And that woman bled to death and died. What the fuck? A criminal complaint filed within the Western District of Pennsylvania last month says Leon Price, 50, on a 911 call between him and Kelly Tichinell. For some reason, I thought that the 911 operator was a chick. I guess it was a dude, Leon. Leon refused to send an ambulance to the mother unless she indicated that she'd go to the hospital. In the complaint, Tichinell's attorney said she described 56-year-old mother Diana, Di- Diana Kronk as jaundiced, incoherent, and bleeding from the rectum. Uh, but Price told her bluntly that no emergency services such as an ambulance would be dispatched to her mom because it would be a waste of resources, the complaint said. What the fuck? No requested emergency services came that day as a result of the defendant Price's actions and as a proximate and or direct result of the lack of emergency medical care. Mom is dead. Oh. If Price had sent over an ambulance or some kind of emergency relief, the complaint says... Kronk would have at least suffered less and might have had a more dignified death. I don't know if I'd say that. I'd say she'd be alive today. The lawsuit also says Price must have been aware of the gravity of the situation due to Tichnell's pleading tone and description of what was seriously wrong with her mother. Price had no authority by statute or otherwise to superciliously, I've never seen that word before, deny services to Kronk or Tichnell, the lawsuit argues. Uh, Kronk died the days. Uh, Kronk died uh, the day after. I believe in my heart that my mother would still be alive if he would have sent an ambulance. It shouldn't have been his decision. He should have sent an ambulance and let the professionals decide if she should go to the hospital or not. Yes. Two years later, Green County, Pennsylvania officials have charged Price with involuntary manslaughter, uh, for which the maximum penalty is ten thousand dollars fine, along with five years prison. Oh my God! What this is. This is all sorts of fucked up. I, I would just want to know why. What okay, What's going through your brain that you say, nah, maybe he's like, I don't want the ambulance drivers to have to deal with your mom because there's blood shooting out of her ass. I mean, who knows? I mean, how much ass would you kick if you called 911 and they said, nah, we're not going to do that. Now, normally when I call 911, they, it shows up on their ID and they don't even want to pick it up. You know, they're like, ah, oh boy, it's him. It's, it's another, uh, the neighbor's dog is out. It's another, uh, my kid hurt his finger and I'm speeding. It's another, uh, uh, help me. My family's got carbon monoxide poisoning. I need to go home or something like that. I'm probably the reason. There's probably a, a publication called 911 Hoax Magazine where it's just entry after entry of my phone calls uh, uh, transcribed. And people are like, this is why we must always uh, raise an eyebrow whenever any person calls with an emergency. It's because of this guy. Holy crap. My brain just has a hard time grasping the nonsense in these recent 911 stories. How fucking stupid can they be? Damn. I don't know what main Chris means when he says, I don't know the context. Like when you scream at Jackie and the rest of the family on Thanksgiving and the take your, and the take your ball and go home. I think I went back too far on the chat. Weird. Incredible. Cannot wrap my mind around that either. All right. Now listen up. Patreon happens today after this show. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. 
Thank you so much. If you're thinking about signing up, if you have have uh, if you have signed up in the past or you just signed up or are signed up right now, patreon.com slash Eric Zane. I appreciate that. Uh, more podcasting each and every day. The two plus hours I give you on the freebie. That's awesome. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Part of it. If you can swing five or 10 bucks a month, even for just one month, just to try it out. That donation goes a long way as I really pour my heart and soul into it. And so uh, trying to keep you as entertained as possible to get you through your day. That's what this is all about. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane, five or $10 donation. $5 gets you all the audio and the archive. $10 gets you all the audio, all the video, all the live streams, everything archived, all there for you. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. Irvine's Auto Repair Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. My goodness. Uh, Of course, the multi-talented Megan and her mother and father. While I got you, while I'm talking about this, uh, Megan sent NASA reveals full image from James Webb Space Telescope. This is going around. There you go. Now that is sweet. If you look a little closer on that brown spot of nebulous gas, you see porn star Barry with this massive crank being part of the nebulous clouds that is spectacular. They leaked the real image. Very, very good. Okay. Back to Irvine's. Any scheduled maintenance, any emergency repairs, take your car. If you are in West Michigan or the surrounding areas to Irvine's Auto Repair, Grand Rapids Hybrid and EV. Lady-owned, veteran-owned, and what's the other thing I say? Family-owned. All three things center around this great family fixing people's cars with expertise and precision unparalleled in the industry. The dealerships call upon Irvine's, especially for hybrids and EVs. This is where you take your car. Irvine's.com. Uh, E-R-V-I-N-E-S, E-R-Vines.com. Senor Martinez, part of the Latino Armada uh, that helped keep the Eric Zane Show podcast moving and growing. A-N-E, heating and cooling, A-E, heating, cooling.net, 616-516-8579. Call up Joe, anything at all. After our service, scheduled maintenance, tune up on the AC. It's expensive to run your AC and your furnace. Fuel is expensive for those things, whether it be energy or gas, electricity, whatever it may be. So you want those things running as efficiently as possible. If they are inefficient, they're using more fuel or more energy. That costs you more money. 616-516-8579. Thanks again to the Kent County Health Department. Talking immunizations today. I will have an interview with uh, Amy, I believe, that I'm going to record and I'll post. Talking immunizations for the kiddos. If you are struggling to get those immunizations, you can get them for free if you qualify. Go to accesskent.com slash health. Okay, uh, hang on. I need a drink. All right, I see Boomer Bob's here. Hey, Boomer Bob, how you doing, buddy? All right. Ah, what the hell? I've seen uh, scenarios in communities, usually in California. Remember that deal where uh, like a, a, uh, an entire armada of black people would show up in a store and then steal everything? I say black people because on all the videos I saw, they're black people. Well, I don't, I mean, I had heard that there's like uh, 
very relaxed laws for these types of thefts. This mass mob of people stealing shit from like malls. So they know that the repercussions are not that great. So then and that has to do with California's very lax laws uh, uh, making they, they're, they're definitely not tough on crime there. I guess this is starting to come over to my neck of the woods because a, uh, what, I don't even know what type of store this, I guess it's a, uh, um, beauty supplies, Alta, a number of Young black people marched into Alta for an organized theft. And they just walk in with bags as a group and just take everything they can. They have their identities concealed. The only thing you can see is that they are black people. And then they leave. It's terrible. Let's get into this. Here's how it unfolded just the other day. A group of organized thieves rush a store and make off with thousands of dollars worth of merchandise in less than a Look minute. Look at this. News 8's Emily Leonard is at the live desk with more on this Hold on a second. Video. A group of organized... This guy over here, he's... Uh... You know, he knows what he's getting. Thieves rush a store and make off with thousands of dollars this, worth of This is so terrible. My God. In less than a minute. News 8's Emily Leonard is at the live desk with more on this shocking video. Emily? Yeah, police in Kalamazoo County say this has happened twice in the last week at the Alta Beauty Store on West Main Street in Oshtemo Township. Take a look as more than a dozen people come into the store with bags and grab as much merchandise as they can before they're confronted by an employee. In less than a minute, the group got $16,000 worth of merchandise, mostly perfume. Police believe the group may be from the Grand Rapids area, but they don't know for sure. Inside our story at woodtv.com, we have pictures of each of the individuals. If you recognize anyone, you're asked to contact the Kalamazoo County Sheriff's Department or Silent Observer. At the live desk, Emily Leonard, News 8. All right, now this pisses me off. This is what starts, uh, uh, well, there's a lot of things that start race wars, but I'm just going to be honest with you here and say whatever the fuck I want because that's why you're here. Now, there's not a racist bone in my body. No, I take it back. There is kind of a racist bone in my body. When it comes to racist jokes, I love racist jokes. But they're just jokes. I mean, I love everybody. But I hate these people. So, if I am the owner and CEO of Alta Beauty, I have a press conference. And in the press conference... I'm sur- uh, I'm flanked by the Proud Boys to my right, the Oath Keepers to my left, and the local Grand Wizard in a hood. Hello, I'd like to welcome you all into this uh, press conference to respond to the sixteen thousand dollars that are uh, that was stolen, and uh, we are now implementing uh, Ground Zero security. All Alta stores are now being policed by the Klan, the Proud Boys, and the Oath Keepers. These three racist groups are going to police Alta Beauty from this day going forward. Thank you. Have a nice day. Kenny makes the point. This has nothing to do with race or skin color. You're right. However... In this video, every single person there was a black guy or a black lady. And we all know that the Oath Keepers and the Proud Boys and the Klan don't like those people. So they're going to be very, very vigilant in trying to protect Ulta Beauty going forward. And you don't even need to pay these assholes in the Proud Boys and the Oath Keepers and the Klan any money. All you need to do is just make some shit up, 
uh, put some MAGA hats on the table and say, here's your payment. And they're going to uh, tell them that they're fighting for freedom or the constitution, you know, all the usual bullshit that those idiots believe. And, uh, and they'll, they'll, they'll bite. These aren't the brightest bulbs, you know, that's how you need to handle this. You need to, if they're going to be, if the people, if the black people are going to be that bulb, okay, these 12 people or so, you need to be bulb back. You need to double down on the boldness. You be bold. Alta is bolder. And you, and then, and then what you do is you do a big ass ad campaign about it. And you have Oath Keepers and Proud Boys putting makeup on each other. But it's like war paint. <laughs> All right. So that's a bunch of shit. Um, another story going around that is uh, local in nature. That is just fantastic. That I just love. Um, did you know that there is a law that if you have to take a shit and you can prove that you have uh, irritable bowel disease, you know, Crohn's, something like that, where you can be just minding your own business and you suddenly have to take a shit, kind of like that lady in that video I was telling you about that we reviewed uh, ad nauseum on Patreon yesterday in the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast. Did you know that, at least in Michigan, you can present a card and it's like a let me take a shit in your in your bathroom card? Now, you know, there's only been one time that I've went into a business and said, hey, can I use your toilet? And they said, hey, you n- number one or number two? And I said, number two. And they said, no. And that was in Honduras at that um, security place. But in Michigan, if you can prove with your take a shit card that you have to take a shit and you have IBS, um, you can, it's the law. You got to let them take a shit. Kyle writes, Zane, when are you getting your card? You know, maybe. That is, that actually happened. And now there's a story about it because um, this family went in and one of the family members got to take a shit. And they go, fuck you. Get out of here. You can't take a shit here. And they said, yeah, well, bullshit. I got my take a shit free card. And they said, no, fuck you. So that's it. And now, so the, the battle lines have been drawn on this one. Oh, my God. Check it out. Kind of emergency that no one wants to talk about, but a West Michigan man is forcing a painful conversation after a local business does denied his family access to a bathroom despite their desperate need. What the business did not know, there's actually a state law that requires retailers to provide restroom access to people with inflammatory bowel disease. Target Aid investigator Susan Samples is on this case tonight. It looks like she has it. One in 100 people suffer from IBD, like Crohn's disease and ulcerative colitis. Actually, I love her. I think she's like the best reporter, investigative reporter I've ever seen. She's like one of my favorites. Yes, where there's I'm actually inflammation of the GI. She's tract. so good, Susan Samples, that though, uh, you know, I mean, she might be one of the elder statesmen in the market or women. I'm attracted to her because of how efficient she is in her storytelling. I'm actually attracted to her aura. Um, I would actually have sex with with her. Correct. Though million of American millions of Americans suffer from it, few outside that group seem to know about the Restroom Access Act and a new app called We Can't Wait. <laughs> there's there's an app He's called We Can't Wait. Raise awareness, but not so excited about showing his. F- I like how they show the up close shot of his leg. I don't think this is the guy who took the dump, though. It's to talk about having a bathroom accident. It was Sunday. He sounds a lot like Kip afternoon, a from fucking family. the, uh, to the double d- what's that? Bathroom. Napoleon Dynamite. We can't wait. Uh, we were begging. He's determined to raise. That's Kip. His awareness, but not so excited about showing his face. Who wants to talk about having a bathroom accident it was sunday afternoon a delightful family outing to the double dip ice cream stand and oh of course they're doing it at the double dip ice cream stand 
interrupted when one of Michael's relatives suffered a sudden flare-up of ulcerative colitis. Think about the worst diarrhea you've had when you had a flu. Kick it up a couple of notches. His family member in panicked pain, oh. Michael says he pleaded with the ice cream shop's owner for access to its non-public bathroom, showed a medical IBD card, had the owner read the state's restroom access law on his phone. And I explained, I said this, you know, please, sir, this is, you know, this is a medical emergency. This isn't something, you know, if you read the, the card, it says this isn't something we can just hold. You know, my family member is going to have an embarrassing accident here in, in a minute if you guys don't help. The owner refused, saying, according to Michael, We have no way to, to know if this is the truth because anybody could just come to us and say, you know, we need to use your private bathroom. So, as predicted. I always hated that argument by owners. It's like, well, even if I was lying to you, it's not like if you let me, everyone in the world is going to know that I lied to you. Just do it, dick. My family member ended up having that that emergency right there. Oh! Right in the middle of their, their dining, outdoor dining area amongst a bunch of people. The Double Dip Depot here on Remembrance Road only serves customers at the drive through or the front window, so there's no inside access. The owner declined an on-camera interview but told me he knew nothing of the law, and even after reading it, he still has health and safety concerns about letting anyone inside the one room where his employees work. The owner pointed out the statute known as Alley's Law exempts businesses if bathroom access would pose a risk. My name is Allie Bain and I am a Crohn's disease patient. Aww. About a third of the states have passed Allie's Law, named for the Illinois woman who was denied bathroom access when she was just 14 years old. I was crying, doubled over in pain. We talked to a fitting room employee and he said that the store did not have any public restrooms. Say you're off. Brave gal. Michael's emotional. Oh, he's, he's crying. This guy's crying. Kip's crying about the shit. Message to the woman who inspired Michigan's law. Thank you so much for not quitting. If we reach, you know, one person. I live here. I can't believe they want to tear this damn thing down. With this and five or ten years down the road, that person says, yeah, you can use my restroom. All right. This guy's over the top. Okay. All right. She's not dead. Whoever it is, poop their pants. You, well, you got to toughen up. You got to, you know, quit being passive about this. If some, if you have an emergency, they say no. Drop your pants and take a shit on the table. That's what you need to do. To someone in a, in a situation like we were, it's all that matters. I mean, you're, I, I say the power is in the shitter because... If you decide, all right, fine, have it your way, asshole, and you take a shit on the 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 one of the those picnic tables, actually get on top of it and take in fact, what she should do to really drive the point home is grab someone's ice cream cone and shit on the ice cream cone and then she has to eat it herself to really gross them out. And then all of those customers, this is retribution. To me, it's all about payback. At that point, you're pissed off. You just want a pound of flesh, okay? You got to fucking keep receipts, and you got to let the world know that this is not right. Shit on the ice cream cone, eat it, do your so your own two, two girls, one cup, and then, I don't know, throw it at the window, or shit in your hand, wipe it, do anything, it doesn't matter, anything gross, doesn't matter. And then, you know, they will learn a lesson to not fuck with people who have IBD, all right? Now, we all know that since yesterday's show, the Ben and Eric Patreon podcast, Kenny is now into scat. So if Kenny were there, he would right away rub his face off and say, I got your toilet right here and lay down on that table. Just like I'm into feet, Kenny would, we would finally have found the next Mrs. Kenny. I mean, what, I mean seriously. All right. I think there's a little bit more to this. That one person who didn't have the embarrassing experience, they're going to remember that. Oh, they're going to appreciate it. 
if Michael decides to file a complaint and police determine Double Dip Depot is not exempt, authorities could issue the shop a $100 civil citation. The Crohn's and Colitis Foundation nationally recently launched an open restrooms movement to push for better access and a new app called We Can't Wait, where people can find accessible, accessible bathrooms and sympathetic businesses. You'll find a link inside my story at woodtv.com. Well, I need business communication. That I feel like I have this disease. Okay. Chris writes $100. What will they do? <laughs> okay. If I have that disease, I don't want the app. I don't want anything because I mean, I can't tell you how many times I've had to take a dump. If I get the app and the card that says, let me take a dump, then we don't have great stories. We have an armada of stories where I've had to take a shit outside. Let's tell one of those stories right now. It was the Grand Rapids Half Marathon. Years ago, back when I wasn't super fat. I was prepared to run an excellent race. They're counting down the time to the start of the race. I have to take a dump. There is a line for the Porta Johns, and I don't want to miss the start. So I just start running like a madman. And I wander over. There's a neighborhood right next to that uh, downtown David D. Hunting YMCA where the race starts. And these are old homes with not a lot of space in between them. But I start running down a side street and I literally ran in between two homes and uh, next to a bush and it's daylight. The, the sun is up. And I dropped them and it, it was just, it was dumb and dumber. It was Ham's beer shit cannon. I grabbed some leaves, took care of business, and that was it. An absolute remarkable effort on my part. Everything worked out perfectly. Incredible. I was so proud of that. And the cleanup was good because we had excellent leaves nearby. And you grab, you can't just grab one. You get a whole bunch of them and just get in there. Thank God it wasn't poison ivy. Holy crap. Uh, double Dip Depot. We need to try to get these people on. I doubt they're there, you know. Double Dip Depot. By this time, people are probably giving them bad Google reviews. Let's see. No. Um. Yeah, I don't see anything about the feces incident. They still have a solid rating. Now it says they're closed. They open at noon at the Double Dip. But you never know. Maybe Mr. Double Dip himself is there. And uh, he can kind of shed some light on this. We've only heard one side of this. Honestly, the guy who was crying on there, what a fucking drama queen. I wouldn't have let him in either. I'm team double dip on this. I bet Mr. Double Dip, when he saw that this was being featured on the news, he probably was like, oh, fuck, man. But you see, we're in a culture war here in West Michigan. The majority of the people that live here will support Double Dip. Because we're, there's a, just a lot of assholes that live here. Okay? 
So all he has to, he'll probably end up being able to retire in like a week because people will support him. Because he wouldn't let this poor son of a bitch use the bathroom. All right. Thank you to Bennett Flooring Installation. 616-318-0167. These are the flooring installers of choice on the Eric Zane Show podcast. If you want it done right the first time, professionally, and the most affordably, call upon them. 616-318-0167. They're the company that is full service if you want, but uh, this locally run business, just a couple of dudes, I encourage you to go ahead and uh, get the room ready. I've done that twice now. gotten the old flooring out. And uh, whether it be carpet or whatever it is you have to do to get the room ready. And then they will uh, show up, measure, and then you buy your own stuff. I'll tell you where in a second. And then they uh, do the job. By the time uh, the day is done, after they measure, they'll give you an estimate. uh, Clearly with exactly what it costs for uh, uh, the materials that they need and uh, the labor. Bennett Flooring Installation, 616-318-0167. I've said this before. It is the uh, uh, most cost-effective way to have flooring installed professionally. Terry writes, double dip owner quoted as saying, you can shit here, but I get to watch. Chris adds, they have mini golf too. Could have filled one of the holes. Others are saying charging to use the bathroom. Uh, Time for a GoFundMe for the Double Dip Depot. All great ideas. Or all great comments. Thank you to Johnson Carpet One Discount Outlet. That is run by Kent Drop the E at a U. His boss, the man he answers to is Darwin. He works down the street at the main showroom where all the rich people hang out. Kent is there with the working class. Okay, so if you're looking for flooring, the best thing to do is, well, it both involves Johnson Carpet One. First thing you do is go to the discount outlet on Chicago Drive in Granville, Michigan. This is a very, very local sponsor. So, like, if you're not in the area... You can't take advantage of this. And I don't give a shit if you're listening in Portugal. Keep listening to the ad on the audio podcast. Very important. It's all about flow. Okay. Yes, I want you to listen to the BetterHelp ad. Yes, I want you to listen to the uh, FitBot ad. Of course, I want you to listen to the Johnson Carpet One Floor and Home ad. The second you stop, that's when I go broke. Some of you are hoping for that. Anyway, Johnson Carpet One Floor and Home Discount Outlet. March in there, and you see all of the different styles of flooring, carpet, laminates, you name it, all there. Anything you could possibly imagine. Ridiculously priced because they buy it by the gigantic tractor uh, trailer full. And they set it up there. It's not the fanciest, prettiest flower of a place, but you will save money. On top of that, when you go into the discount outlet and say my name, they will take 10% off. Thank you to Johnson Carpet. Johnson Carpet, one discount outlet. Kent, drop the E out of you. Good man. Him and uh, Aram, not the Aram that lives in Nashville, but also Armenian, work there. And I think Josh. Josh is the guy's name. Is that right, Kent? The guy who doesn't listen, but you told him to go eat a fucking Luigi burger over at Bosco's. Yes. Go there. Buy your shit. Speaking of Bosco's, uh, Bosco's Pub, I am getting ready to schedule a, another uh, uh, party with the audience. Uh, it's just a get together. Hang out. Have some food. Bosco's Pub. Online at boscospub.com. They are part of Terra Square. In beautiful Hudsonville, Michigan. Go there for lunch, go there for dinner, and they are hiring. 
tell you what, if things keep going the way they are, I'm going to go and, and cook there. Boscospub.com. Hang on, I need water. Don't look now, but I am 13 pounds lighter than when this whole planning to beat Mike Ball in the Grand Rapids Half Marathon began. That's right. 13 pounds, baby. And that's after the trip in which calories don't count. Feeling good about that. Today's a new day. I think a lot of it has to do with the intermittent fasting. Last food I'll eat is probably like 8, 8 p.m. And it's usually garbage. Last night, uh, 6.45, two bowls of Lucky Charms. That was it. That was my dinner. Prior to that, during the day, I had a protein bar few handfuls of nuts this is not a well-balanced diet felt like shit on my four mile run probably because there's nothing in my system that's worthy fuel i am still doing this wrong but whatever i'm doing is having some degree of positive effect i think if i only started to get my act together on the food i'd eat i'd probably be a lot better off So I won't eat today until noon. That's a long time. No food. It's actually quite easy. I don't even think about it. I get so busy doing what I do here. And I think, I haven't looked totally into it, but I guess intermittent fasting, it does something to your system. I guess just the idea that you're not eating the whole fucking day like I used to do. All right. Uh, so in the state of Florida, some guy is pissed off because some of the books that are, hold on a second, (laughs) Brandis writes, you really are a big toddler. (laughs) That diet is horrendous. I know. I know. It's embarrassing. Kent, going back to Kent, he says, yeah, the dude's name is Josh, and he does listen now. Thank you. That's nice. Tell him I said thanks. Well, I guess he'll hear this. He's subscribed on Twitch, too. All right. So this dude, this dad, he's got young kids in the school or kids in the school. I don't know how young they are. But in the school's library, they some of the um, uh, material in the library has some sexual uh, uh, features to it. Some of the stories um, have some graphic descriptions of sex. And uh, there's thousands of books in the damn thing, in the school library. And one of the books is a book called Lucky by an author named Alice Siebold. It entails a story of a college girl who was raped and it included the details of the attack. Now, if you're describing the details of an attack in the sexual nature of it, to me, that's not pornography. That's not done to titillate, to be lascivious in nature, to try to make someone get a heart on so that they can masturbate. There may be people who read it who do. Uh, I need look no further than the cast of characters enjoying the show right now. We already revealed about how Kenny is now turned on by Poo Poo. But this book, just on it's from what I read about it, that to me does not sound like something that would be uh, sexually gratifying in any way hearing about 
a lady getting raped. But this guy thinks that it's porno. So he's pissed off and he went to the school board meeting and he's got uh, a giant display of the text and he's going to read it into the microphone, this guy. Now, the school board meeting is broadcast on uh, public access TV and it's online and random people are listening. So the school board, they opt to, no, we don't want you to read the text from the book. It's too graphic for you to read um, into the microphone. And he thinks, this idiot thinks that, well, that must mean this is pornography. This is how it unfolded uh, when it all happened at the school board meeting. Um, Tonight, I'm going to give a sampling from three books that are in our libraries at the Fleming School and the Oakleaf School. And then we can discuss, you can discuss, the process by which these books get on the shelves. Because there's a Clay County employee that got paid to put this book. There's There's no way this guy was born in Florida. I can almost pinpoint exactly where this guy is from. I would guess Matawan, New Jersey is where this guy is from, and I bet you I'm right. got paid to put this book, Lucky, by Alice Sebold. I'm going to read things. If there's children watching, cover their ears. He began to need I'm going to stop you right there, sir. I'm going to stop you right there. Aha. Uh-huh. Turn the microphone mm-hmm. off. Turn off his microphone, please. I've told you I'm stopping you. The reason I'm stopping you is because these meetings are, if you'll hush your mouth for a minute and listen, <laughs> he's talking, you may learn something. Safe enough for our schools and our children, you should be able to listen to them. Well, the problem is, sir, is these meetings are broadcast. There are people at home that are watching it on YouTube. There are people that are watching it on community television. Are you going to listen or are you going to run your mouth? I love that you're going to listen or you're going to run your mouth. I just, I should have used that recently. You'll get it back, but you'll get it back to talk about something besides reading pornography into a, a public television set. There are federal and state laws that prohibit you from saying the things that you're getting ready to say on television. There are state laws that prohibit and federal communications laws that prohibit you from He's right. publishing these things to a child. You don't have you see this guy's so stupid. Okay. Um, this guy, his his point is, well, then why is the book in the school? I mean, if you're saying what I'm saying, if it falls on a child's ears that's porno, how can you put it in well, it's all about context, you fucking moron. That has a lot to do with it. If you're just blurting it out to the world, that's entirely different. Have the, you don't have the ability at this point to determine who's watching the television show. Exactly. For you to say, everybody cover your ears just doesn't cut it. I appreciate the time you put into a trifold presentation. <laughs> this fucking dick. He shows up and, and puts it in the face of the school board member. They're like, yeah, fuck you. That's what I would do. I would love. You see, this is why I could never do this job. I could never do this job. It takes all my strength and energy when someone's bowing up on me to, to, to not grab them by the fucking throat and say, fuck you, you piece of shit. Yeah, so, right. And He's so, forcing you to look at something that's that you okay. may or not so look, look at. The, look, let's just throw it away. Let's, hold on. Just throw it away, the guy says. I've been pretty, pretty deep in the weeds with this stuff. And as a parent of three kids, I, I, I get where you're coming from. Don't say that. Don't say that. You don't. Don't try to split hairs here. Just call this guy what he is, a piece of shit asshole. 100%. And so what we're going to look at tonight in terms of the new policy is connected to the new legislation which allows us to, to evaluate these things. He referenced Chapter 847. That's existing legislation. That the state comes forward with very specific language about what's allowable and what's not relative to pornographic material. So if those things are brought forward... Describing a sex crime does not constitute pornography. If it described a rape 
And then the author wrote, and she loved it. Maybe. I don't think it does. I haven't read the book for sure. But, I mean, seriously, that, uh, d- describing the, uh, the rape of a woman is is not pornography. And, you know, like, hey, a sensitive kid's ears can't hear that. I'm guessing in your house, asshole, the kid hears a hell of a lot worse. Like, like this right here. And we evaluate that next to the statutory language, and it's found to violate that. Oh, right. What you showed me right there clearly would. And that stuff has to be taken out of circulation. All right. So the people that run the school board are kind of like they um, they want to do it in a way that um, is diplomatic, I guess. There was more to this. Try to put my arm uh, it, it This guy actually speaks a little more of this asshole dad. After that all went down, he was interviewed and they kind of like uh, were able to get more of his point. So he tries really hard to make the same point. And I think I can get to that if as long as I can get through this long ass commercial. Uh, come on. Go, go, go. Aha. Accountable for putting pornography in front of this county's children. I went to the June 30th Board of Ed meeting at the Fleming Island School, the high school that covers all of Clay County. The representation for the Board of Ed, as soon as I announced that I was going to read from some books that parents, myself and others, found in the public school libraries. How, how um, shitty of a life do you have to have if instead of, you know, living, you're, you're, you're scouring the fucking library for books that have naughty words? That are clearly pornographic. He had the mic cut off which is an admission that such things exist. No, it's not. It served my purpose just as well as if I had to read those horrible words. The lawyer did his job. He wasn't polite. He wasn't kind. He did his job. He protected the Board of Ed from liability. That's great. If he worked half as hard to protect our children, Uh. I could have stayed home. There's been a lot of denial. The teachers are saying... There's no such thing as porn in our libraries. And at the same time, they're creating a policy to quietly make it go away. Well, either it's there or it's not. By the way, we'll be held accountable half as hard. If I were a school board member, I would show porno at the meetings. Like I would go to my favorite site, Brazzers.com. And I would say, sir, this is porno. This then this book is not like that. You 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 do see the difference, don't you? To protect our children, I could have stayed home. There's been a lot of denial. The teachers are saying there's no such thing as porn in our libraries, and at the same time, they're creating a policy to quietly make it go away. Well, either it's there or it's not. By the lawyer stifling me, that's an admission that it is there. But I do not believe that a parent's voice is going to be heard. So when I tell you what that a I pain in the ass books, book X is pornographic and doesn't belong near a child, especially mine, you're going to pull it from the shelves. That's the new policy. They're going to remove it for review. By law, the review has to include a thorough reading of the entire text. OK, so let's say that there's only two or three hundred books that are so vile they need action today. Who's going to read them? It'll be members of the American Librarians Association. I don't trust them. Uh, Wait a minute now. Now that's just silly. If you can't trust the American Librarians Association, who can you trust? It'll be media specialists. Yeah, you know, those wayward souls in the American Librarians Association. I don't trust them. It'll be Board of Ed meeting. The persons you saw that wanted my... The only person I'm going to trust reading this porno is me. I suggest that I become the porno filter for the school. My cutoff, I don't trust them. So how do you regain a partnership as the Board of Ed when you've lost the parents' trust, especially the conservative... Send it to me! Send it to me! They can. I'm Bruce Friedman, school porno reader. If you can get it by the Bruce Friedman porno filter, you can have your book at the school. 
Chris K writes, he even looks like a Goomba. Sarah says, asshole of the day. Sarah says, be happy kids are still fucking reading a book. Yeah, no one's going to read these books anyway. Why do they even have libraries? Maine Chris says, Eric, did you watch Softcore with your kids or Massive Squirt Fest? That's an odd question. And I don't know why you would ask it, you sick fuck. My God, go on a vacation. Go to Mount Vesuvius and take a selfie. Oh, my God. This dude. What happened? I I can promise you. You know, it's that, what is that uh, saying? He doth protest too much. He's probably watching it with his kids. That's why he's doing this. To compensate. Moving on. A man who actually had a brilliant plan, but I think he got a little bit too... too aggressive. And a little bit too bold. Has been arrested. Accused of marching into Amazon warehouses in different spots in the United States. And supporting, I'm sorry, and stealing from the warehouses. Side note, back to the other story. Maine Chris says, this is bullshit. For the first time, I support someone from Jersey. So Maine Chris, 87, uh, does not want the book uh, detailing the crime of the lady being raped in schools. These aren't such delicate flowers, Maine Chris, and sometimes these terrible stories, it's important to uh, tell in context. That's not porno, you idiot. All right, enough of that. So this, what this guy did with the Amazon thing was he uh, got a job at Amazon and figured out how they run their business at those giant warehouses that you see everywhere. And then, because of that, he knew all of the uh, uh, back ways in and all the security things in order to get access to the main area. And then he filled up bins full of shit and then would steal them. This is incredible. This is how the guy pulled it off, but I think he got a little bit too bold have arrested a former Amazon worker and accused him of stealing more than $100,000 in merchandise. Authorities say the merchandise came from the company's warehouses across the southeast, including right here in metro Atlanta. Fox 5's Doug Evans has those details. What's up with that guy's hair? Marquise Ryans is accused of stealing more than $300,000 worth of merchandise from the Amazon distribution center right here in Noonan in Coweta County. Look at the size of that place. Holy fuck. If you've never seen one of these warehouses, they are huge. An investigator here with the Coweta County Sheriff's Office. All because people need shit. Says Ryan's knows how to navigate the big building, how to get in, how That's to him. get out. Look at him. And while doing that, he's accused of stealing tens of thousands of Look dollars it. worth of Apple products and other electronics, not just here in Coweta County, but also in Alabama and Mississippi. This individual is a past employee of Amazon. Now, if you're listening to just the audio podcast, uh, they show a clip of him wheeling the cart up full of bins with bins full of merchandise and putting stuffing it into the trunk of somebody's car who's the accomplice right on camera so this guy obviously is perhaps uh, a little bit too aggressive on he worked back there in 2020 at an amazon distribution center once he's inside he's comfortable he starts talking to other employees he starts talking to management he walks in the break oops 
Come on now. Go, go, go. What are, I didn't do anything. Uh oh. Did I just lose my internet? Ruh row. Hang on. Not good. Oh, this sucks. Come on now. Uh, what's doing so great? Deputies have arrested. He's comfortable. He starts talking to other employees. He starts talking to management. He walks in the break room. He grabs a little handheld device for the, one of the scanners and just starts going down each aisle of Amazon, just picking up items and putting them into bins. Investigators say Marquise Ryans is 28 years iPad. old. He's under arrest in Alabama and will eventually be extradited to Georgia. He's accused of stealing over $100,000 worth of merchandise so far from Amazon distribution centers in Huntsville, Alabama. Horn Lake in Olive Branch, Mississippi, as well as right here in Noonan. He is a suspect in similar thefts at Amazon distribution centers in Indiana, Kentucky, and Tennessee, according to authorities. And we're still getting more tips in of where other incidents have happened at Amazon warehouses. Since hitting this Amazon distribution center right here in Noonan, investigators tell me that Amazon has tightened up security, especially when it comes to how former employees get in the building. I'm Doug Evans, Fox 5 News in Cowboy. You see, this is so stupid. I would think you'd have better odds of robbing a bank than getting away with whatever the fuck uh, from Amazon. And then you still have to uh, liquidate the stolen goods to be able to get the money that you need from them. <laughs> Kyle writes, black again. They should use security that Ulta uses. <laughs> Bob is in Huntsville, Alabama, uh, Alabama, Boomer Bob, who looks remarkably young despite smoking all the damn time. And being a rock star. Yeah, well, there you go, Bob. At your Huntsville, Alabama, Amazon distribution center, some dude stole the shit and tried to make off with it, ended up getting caught. Okay, I need you to hold there because Eric's got a tinkle and there's still some time in the show. Actually, let me do this. Let me do this. Uh, I do want to stress that I am in need of some cameo love. I want to do a cameo for someone. Cameo.com slash Eric Zaner. Download the Cameo app today. I've got racing going on at Berlin Raceway tonight and tomorrow. We've got two nights of racing at Berlin Raceway. Okay? Tickets are 15 bucks for this week's races. Kids get in. Kids 15 and under get in free. Parking is free. Beer is just 5 bucks a pop. That's a lot cheaper than you get at any other venue. You can bring in a cooler 12 by 18. Don't make it any bigger. They'll kick your ass out of there. 12 by 18. Snacks. You can bring snacks in. You can bring soft drinks. None. Uh, no glass. You can't bring any glass because somebody's going to get unruly and throw a bottle onto the track. That's a problem. Or bounce it off some kid's head. No glass. You cannot bring your own booze in. Uh, you used to. They used to say, yeah, bring your own booze in, which, oh, my God. Can you imagine the drunk fest at those races? Holy shit. Uh, they've tightened it up a little bit. The uh, concessions are affordably priced, too. Hot dogs are two or three bucks. You know, it's awesome. You got a bar underneath the grandstand, if that's your thing. You got a band playing there. You can get merch there. There's a nice merchandise store for Berlin Raceway. And then the racing. You know, racing starts at 630, qualifying just before it's awesome. You got two nights of racing with the uh, 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 super modifieds that are going around the track. It's going to be awesome. In fact, I just gave away tickets. Congrats to Terry and congratulations to Matt. I think I might have mentioned that earlier. You guys have five packs of tickets. What I do is I take the post and uh, anybody who liked it. And then, uh, you know, there was like 31 people who liked it. Hit a number generator, randomly generate the numbers. Boom. Came out to be those two. Terry's been winning a lot lately. Just won 100 bucks and smarter than a former drug dealer trivia. Good job, Terry. So Berlin Raceway going on tonight and tomorrow. Blue Frost IT is the managed IT service provider for this show. Now listen to me. You must listen to me. If you have a small or medium-sized business and you're looking to upgrade your tech because the shit you have, your employees hate it. It's so slow. They hate their lives. Uh, time is money. You need equipment that is up to speed and working. So... 
Don't just go and buy anything at Best Buy. That's stupid. Sit down with Blue Frost IT. Tell them what you do at your business and what the needs are. You will have a custom-made uh, IT setup for you after that complimentary consultation with Blue Frost IT. Call them. Mention my name. 616-285-50 for Blue Frost IT. The Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage. It's time to stop renting. Would you just trust me on this? For some of you, that's a tough thing to do because you're like, I can't. I don't have good credit. But you, 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 oh, quit being a child. First of all, you don't know until you talk to a professional like Mario. Even if you get a 10% uh, interest rate, it's better than paying rent. Have Mario do his work, put him to work, and figure that out for you. Now, if it's so shitty, your credit, because you're a dick, you can't get a mortgage, don't worry. He's going to say, hey, um, you suck so bad, but I'm going to help you be less shitty. This is what you need to do. Call me back in a year after you start paying your shit on time. Your credit score is going to improve and I'll get you into a loan. I know that all sounds ridiculous, but that's what a lot of people deal with. Sometimes it's bankruptcy. Sometimes it's divorce. Hey, that's life. Uh, also, if you have a great credit score, Mario is the person to call. He just, I, I pointed out people with shitty credit score because sometimes that's the most difficult thing to navigate. Mario takes everybody, and he is awesome. They have the money at Van Dyke Mortgage. The Mario Flores Lakeshore team of Van Dyke Mortgage, 231-332-6505. I must go tinkle, talk amongst yourselves, be rude to each other, start fights. Kyle, who also does what Mario does for a living, writes, yeah, crybaby, talk to Mario. If you wait, lenders will actually hand you a bottle of lube before you get screwed with what rates will do. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back. All right. You think I... Okay. If it wasn't proof enough that I'm a Hubble disciple with the book that I just showed you, Hubble's Universe, don't forget, I also have this one. Whoa. Hubble, window on the universe. My grandson ripped the book cover on this one. But look at this shit. I've been talking about this for years. And everybody thought that I'm just an asshole being a fucking idiot. I have my Starfinder book. This is a good one. I got my Solar System book. Night Sky month by month. Uh huh. Uh, the universe in illustrated history of astronomy. This is a good one. Oh, shit. And then um, I witnessed World War II, which has nothing to do with it, but it's still really good. Hold on. All right. real soft spot in my heart for the uh, Hubble telescope. So it's superior to James Webb. Main Chris, who was getting himself in trouble with his stupid comments about the library books, says, I rescind my comments about the porno library. I jumped in mid-discussion. I researched the books and they are about recovery and correcting sexual coping mechanisms, not porno. My apologies. Accepted. See how easy that is? Cole writes, download the Sky View app. Oh, yeah, like I don't have that. Are you kidding me? That's how I go to bed at night. What's out right now? 
Chris writes, there's a new Nova episode about the James Webb telescope. It's a pretty good watch. We'll see. I'm pretty suspicious of this James Webb thing. All right. Um, It wasn't long ago that we talked on this show about the alligator guy, the dude who um, he fell in love with the alligator. I can't remember if it was on Patreon or what, but I, I called him. I got him on the phone. And he got pissed off at me. And uh, he, he he fell in love with a baby gator. And um, it, it's teeny tiny. And he says, I, I love, it's like his lover. He puts it, he's it, Karen. That was it. And I think he slides it into his asshole. That's just my speculation. But anyway, um, he got pulled over by the cops on a police chase of all things. And they took him to jail. He's an idiot. And then they said, well, what are we going to do with this gator? So they took it over to a place, a uh, reptile rescue near the area in the middle of Michigan. And um, they're taking care of it, but they don't, they, they're required to not give it back unless if they can prove that the animal will be safe. He can't seem to do that. He got belligerent. And, um, you know, uh, the reptile rescue, they, part of their... Um, uh, concern is uh, safety for the public. There's a lot going on there. Now, th- this story is not about that particular gator, but it, what it's what can happen when Michigan assholes who voted for Donald Trump decide that they've had enough with their gator. They don't have the brain power to understand that the gator is going to be large enough to eat them. Remember the quote, Maureen writes, me and Karen were just driving around looking for a place to live. He's homeless. The fucking little gator was in his car. So, uh, Trump supporter, his gator grows too large. What does Trump supporter do? He dumps it in the Kalamazoo River. Reports of an alligator in the Kalamazoo River led to the closure of the local nature center. It's known as the White House Nature Center. They had to close it. It was a four to five foot long gator in the general area of the Kalamazoo River where it runs through the nature center. Uh, People are asked to stay away from the nature center and remain vigilant around the bodies of water. The college said it is working. Uh, the college said it is um, the college. Why does it say the college? Oh, the uh, nature center is run through Albion College. People are asked to stay away. They're trying to resolve the issue. So the White House Nature Center. So I, I need to know. So it's about time. We'll see how this goes. A phone call in, see if we can get something going here. Haven't had much luck today. Did you guys hear that Ivana Trump died? Trump's first wife? Wife. I wonder what she was worth. I know that she took him for a ride back in the day when they got divorced. She was 73. Um, Let's see. What is What was her net worth? She was worth quite a bit of money. A hundred million dollars when she died. That is the mother of Ivanka and then Eric and then some other asshole. I think Ivanka is the only one who's not an asshole. All right. White House Nature Center. Six, two, nine. Come on. Ah. Uh, 
Hi, you've reached the mailbox of Jason Raddatz, director of the White House Nature Center. If you'd like, please leave your name, a short message, and a telephone number, and I'll return your call as soon as I'm able. Or if you need to get a hold of me immediately, please feel free to contact me on my cell phone. That number is area code 231-510-3735. Thank you. Record your message at the tone when you are... What did he say his name was? Jason? Hi, this is Jason. I'm unable to oh, take your call at the moment. Say. Please leave a detailed message that includes your name and your phone number. What's the... Uh, what if I see a gator, Jason? Maureen says, Ivana Trump was found at the bottom of a staircase. Wonder if she fell or was pushed. Soaked in bleach adds fell just like Jeffrey committed suicide. Oh, come on now. All right. Well, that went nowhere and that's unfortunate. Sometimes that happens. Okay. Um, I've been meaning to talk about this next story the whole week. There's a lot of uh, moving parts to it because I can't believe that it was a thing. And um, I'm glad that where we are right now makes it so that it's not a thing. This is the age old discussion about statue removal. This has to do with uh, terrorism And uh, this being uh, us having statues, in my opinion, of Confederate war heroes. Like the ones that Kenny has posters of in his bedroom. Next to the Defender and Dig Dug posters. Is on par with us putting Mohammed Atta statues at the airports where the 9-11 attacks originated. That's how hideous of a maneuver it was for the United States to uh, have statues of terrorists. Now, actually, I can I can one hundred percent see how in the dirty South you would have statues of these terrorists because of how racist the South is. We all know that. However, in the United States Capitol, to have a statue of Civil War terrorist Edmund Kirby Smith, who is a uh, former, uh, who was a senior officer of the Confederate States Army, in the Capitol is absolutely atrocious and it is no more they 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 removed the statue with much fanfare and they replaced it with a uh educator a black educator and and i think that that's that's really good here you have uh, dot matrix herself nancy pelosi in this picture and uh this woman is hated by a lot of people and uh but not in this room because here she is you got the rosa parks statue that's key and then you got this person who is uh mary mcleod beth bethune bethune the statue was unveiled wednesday in the u.s capitol look at that there she is she's there's the statue of uh of uh Ms. Bethune, I think I say Bethune, Bethune. The first black American in the National Statutory Hall collection. I don't know how that can be because you've got Rosa Parks right next to her. So I'm a little confused by that. Bethune was a civil rights activist, a presidential advisor, and the founder of the Daytona Literary Literary and Industrial Training School for Negro Girls, which that's an antiquated term. You don't call people Negroes these days. 
that became Bethune Cookman University in Daytona Beach. Her statue represents the state of Florida. Each state is allowed to have a couple statues in the capital. So that's what you do. So, like, if Michigan is to be represented in the capital, um, since so many people in Michigan are backwards butt fucks, you would put Kid Rock and Ted Nugent if Michiganders had their way. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi hosted an unveiling ceremony with uh, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, who you know he was not happy to be there. Uh, Kathy Castor, Democrat, Val Demings, Democrat, and Marco Rubio also there. So Rubio and McCarthy are like, you, can you believe this shit? We got to sit through this. I think actually this was a bipartisan move. And those two, even though they're horrible people because they're Republican, uh, they actually supported this. So they these two assholes had a moment of clarity where they thought that this makes sense. Somehow it got through the clutter of bullshit in their stupid Republican brains. And they actually agreed with it. So that is good. Uh, talked about how each state can send two statues of distinguished citizens to represent it in the U S Capitol that, you know, it's a good thing that they set, put this statue in place, uh, after January six, after that group of assholes tried to take over our country and overthrow the government because, uh, they would have destroyed this statue of any black person. Uh, a handful of states have done this, but uh, have uh, sent... Okay, it says since 2000, states have been able to remove and replace existing statues with new ones. So Florida did this. This is a Florida thing. For a change, Florida got something right. A handful of states have done so, but until Wednesday, none of these new additions depicted black Americans. Now, I, I don't get it. I don't understand what makes some of you idiots tick when you say things like... <laughs> You can't erase history. You got to leave the statues up of terrorists and racists. Why? One word question. Why would you do that? Several word question. Why? Why would you do that? Don't you ever consider that as time passes... We gain insight, context, and wisdom. If you learn to adapt to information as it's coming to you, it's okay to change your mind. The statue of Bethune replaces Confederate General Edmund Kirby... A little bit about him. Um, let's see. He ended up being a fugitive of the law. He saw, negotiated the surrender of his department on May 26, 1865. Smith was the last full general to do so. Signed the terms of his surrender in Galveston, Texas on June 2nd, eight weeks after Robert E. Lee surrendered. He fled the country for Mexico and then Cuba to escape prosecution for treason. I guess, you know, I mean, I understand why he did that. And I understand why he actually fought for his way of life. Those hillbillies loved slavery. They loved, uh, you know, their lifestyle. 
I don't understand why he was even put, a statue was up in our capital of a man who fled the country because he was wanted for treason. Why did we ever agree to that? Who is the asshole that signed off on that? In August of that year, General Beauregard's house near New Orleans was surrounded by federal troops who suspected the general of harboring uh, uh, General Smith. Um, bah, bah, bah. All the inhabitants were locked in a cotton press overnight. Beauregard complained to General Sheridan who expressed his annoyance at the treatment of the high-ranking officer. His erstwhile enemy Smith returned to the U.S. later that year to take an oath, oath of amnesty. So basically, they they uh, they went light on these racist terrorists if they uh, basically bent the knee. He then went into pro, uh, private. He was very educated, very smart man. Uh, he went into the private sector. He was the president of the Atlantic and Pacific Telegraph Company. That ended in failure. He started a prep uh, prep school in Newcastle, Kentucky. Boy, I wonder what the uh, I wonder what it was like uh, a teaching in that school. First class, hate black people. Overthrow the government. So I just find it ridiculous that this even happened in the first place. The Smith statue was removed. The statue of Bethune replaces one of Confederate General Edmund Kirby Smith. The change was directed by a state law signed by then-Governor Rick Scott in 2018. The Smith statue was removed in 2021. The Bethune statue will be joined by others in the next few years. Virginia removed its statue of Robert E. Lee in 2020 and plans to replace it with civil rights leader Barbara John. Yes, yes. You got to put Flavor Flav up there. You know, uh, Russell Simmons. Uh, just put run DM, DMs, L O cool J in 2019, Arkansas decided to replace both its statues of white supremacist, James Paul Clark. What Arkansas had a statue of white supremacist, James Paul Clark and uh, Confederate sympathizer, Uriah Milton Rose with depictions of civil rights activist, Daisy Bates and musician, Johnny cash though both of the old statues remain in the Capitol. So basically in the Capitol right now, there is a, there is a statue of white supremacist James Paul Clark. What the fuck? What is taking so long with getting that statue out of there? You just put a strap around it, put it to the back of a Silverado pickup and yank that fucker down. And then I like how Arkansas is like, yeah, well, we're, we're more woke now. We're going to replace those statues with Johnny Cash and civil rights activist Daisy Bates. Don't even try it. We all know Arkansas is backwards as fuck anyway. You can replace all the statues you want, but you're always going to be a slave uh, white supremacist state. Everybody knows it. Just because you put up a couple statues doesn't change anything. I am KO writes, I hate how accurate that is. I think she might be referring to Boomer Bob. Rosa didn't vote for Biden. She ain't black. Hmm. I see. I am KO says I was referring to your Nugent and Kid Rock comment. And I am a man, sir. Pardon me. Hello to you. Don't recognize the name. So that is just all kinds of fucked up in my opinion. But I'm glad that they've got the Bethune statue in place now. Hey, I'd love to help your business. If you have a business and you want someone talking about it and you don't want to break the bank, let me help you. Or at least let me tell you how I can help you. Drop me a line anytime, eric at ericzaneshow.com. There's a sweet local mom and pop car dealer who reached out to me. And he said, hey, can I advertise on your show? And I said, 
I want to, but I can't. I already have a car dealer. Maybe down the road. But if you have a business, reach out to me, eric at ericzainshow.com. Truth be told, I'm trying to get another burger joint on. And you're like, wait a minute. What about Bosco's? Yeah, that's true. But Bosco's is on the west side. The other place I'm trying to get is on the north side. Way different. I can do both when it comes to a burger place. Anyway, I completely digress. Let me help your business. Eric at ericsaintshow.com. Thank you to Frank Fuss. My policy shop insurance. If you go to the website, buyinsurancehere.com and fill out the form, you are then putting in motion your first meeting with Frank Fuss. Frank is a licensed independent insurance agent slash broker. Uh, two big things. He does everything, but two big things to focus on. First of all, if you were, uh, you or someone you know or love is getting ready to turn 65, uh, Medicare is in your future. Frank is the Medicare Advantage Plan expert. Don't do that alone. Navigating Medicare on your own is difficult. My brother-in-law, the NFK, tried that, and everything got screwed up. Frank had to fix it. How much did that cost the NFK? Zero. People like you and I and the NFK don't pay Frank. Frank gets paid by the insurance industry. Also, Obamacare or healthcare.gov. If you are without health insurance between jobs, just lost your job, or maybe your employer does not uh, offer insurance, buy a policy online. Zane, I can't afford $1,000 a month for health care. I know. You you, you probably don't know exactly how how it works because no one has really made a big deal about how healthcare.gov works. I do make a big deal about it because this is how I get my insurance. Uh, At the start of every month, you pay some of the premium cost, just like you did at your job at one point. And then the government pays for the rest. It's a tax, uh, uh, what do you call it? Not subsidy. Forget the word. Tax subsidy? Tax incentive? I forget. It might be subsidy. Tax credit? Uh... Something to do with your taxes. Anyway, you make too much money, though, you got to pay that back. If you make under a a certain threshold, and that's what you have to talk about with Frank, uh, it's wiped off the books. You don't have to pay it. Frank's got all the details. Get covered. 616-914-4070. Call or text. Mention my name. He'll handle the rest. TC Paintball. Waiting on Rick. For the next big paintball war, TC paintball, paintball war number 19 is going to happen. Uh, Paintball going on this weekend. If you do want to get a group together and play outdoors, uh, you should probably make a reservation because they're packed on the weekends. Uh, Gather up the group and book a paintball party. Team building through work, neighborhood kids, your friends, bachelor parties, whatever it may be. Drop-ins during the week, no problem. Wednesday is Little League Day for the kids and Ladies Day. TCPaintballGR.com. And also something to fun, uh, fun to do this weekend. Uh, Full House Comedy online at FullHouseComedy.com. Uh, shows each and every weekend. Full House Comedy. There you go. We are looking for the asshole of the day today. Who's it going to be? Uh, someone suggested that 14-year-old that ran his cake hole should be the asshole of the day again. After uh, he spilled the beans on uh, 45-year-old Savannah Daisley. I really like Jamingo's sliding scale of punishment for uh, women sex offenders. It might be one of the funnier things I heard all week. And that's a that's an upset because it came out of Jamingo's mouth. One of the least funny people on the planet. All right. Today's asshole of the day. 
brought to you by TC Paintball and JM Synthetics, is the library porno loser. Thank you, Kyle Ryan, for the tip on that one. Uh, yes, that that is uh, that is a good one. That is your asshole of the day today. Links to the stories that I talk about are available in the show notes of the podcast. Hopefully, if uh, if you want to check anything out, not hopefully I will do it. And that is a wrap on the week for the free podcast. My work is not done though. I have a podcast to get ready for, to write, and to then do on Patreon. Patreon.com slash Eric Zane. I just picked up another one. Thank you to Chris Yu for signing up. Chris Yu is is kind of funny because he's there and then he's gone and then he's there. And I can't figure out if he's just realizing that it's not renewing or if I upset him and then he leaves and comes back. I don't always know. But we it is I am I'm pretty intrigued by the uh pickups in the last week. Tom S, Scott K, Ryan P, Paco. And uh now Chris U in the past week, not to mention um I think it was Robert also signed up. Yeah, thank you guys. I appreciate that. It's turning around, picking up the pieces. The new OG in effect. Thank you to the new OG for uh, answering the call and signing up on Patreon with your donations. If you like the content on the free podcast, sign up on Patreon and you can get more. That donation Keeps me podcasting. All right. Been a little wonky lately, but we seem to be kind of like uh, uh, dipping out of that and uh, shedding all of the uh, uh, nonsense that made things very, 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 very odd for a period of time. But God bless the new OG. You are appreciated. Thank you. And thank you to the old OG, too. I mean, my God. You guys are awesome as well. That's going to do it. Till next time, folks. Have a good time. The Eric Zancho Podcast is concluding now. At Progressive, we know there's nothing like the feeling of riding a motorcycle with your crew on the open road. That symphony of engines roaring in perfect harmony. It's a feeling that would be impossible to recreate on the radio. Until now. Hit it, Jerry. Oh, my word. Really, really terrible. Is that a glockenspiel, Jerry? Quote with Progressive and see if you could save with America's number one motorcycle insurer. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates.
Uh, no, no, Jerry. It's over.